All right, well, that was wonderful. All the singing tonight was good. And you know, it all really goes together if you think about it, uh, because uh, if you're going through something tonight, or if you feel like, I don't know if I can really do uh, what the Bible's told me that I can do, uh, well, our God's big enough and uh, can definitely do that for you. And, uh, and then, so we're talking a little bit about, um, about fruit of the Spirit, and the girls sang this a few minutes ago about faith and joy. I can have that when it shouldn't, shouldn't have it. I can have it. And then they just talked about faith uh, and being big enough, and our God's big enough to definitely do it. Galatians chapter 5, I want you to uh, turn there with me to, tonight. We're going to do a Bible study tonight and, uh, and study through several verses of the Bible. And, uh, and hopefully this will be a help to all of us tonight. The Bible's always a help. If you're, if you're listening and you're paying attention, the Bible is always a help to you if you're paying attention to it. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, the Bible says um, in verse number 18, But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, and it goes through several. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. And, and watch some of these that are, that are in here, and we'll try to maybe talk about some of those. Hatred. And what, think about what we're seeing in the world today. Hatred and variance, which is causing divisions, causing contentions. Variance. Emulations, which is to rival others. Wrath. Obviously what wrath is. Strife. Contentions. Fighting. Seditions, which just means opposition of authority or rebellion. Think about what we're seeing today. Heresies envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling. And reveling, really, uh, all that that really is is rioting and brawling. And think about what we're seeing today. I mean, really think about what we're seeing in the world today. And I want you to think about this. Should it surprise us that we're seeing any of this stuff that's going on in the world today? Should it surprise us that the world acts like this? No, it shouldn't surprise us the world acts like this. Uh, the world does. Is this what the world does? It, it acts after the flesh. It's what you see in the world. I want to talk uh, tonight, it'll be a two-part sermon that I'll do on goodness. On goodness. Uh, when it gets down to the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. What is goodness? It's acts of kindness, charity, mercy. Uh, goodness can simply be good character, good conduct. It can be integrity, honesty, uprightness. It can be con uh, qualities that constitute value, something of value. If somebody says that, uh, that lumber is good or that soil is good, what they're saying is it has value to it. It's able to do something. It's, it's going to have some kind of value. The first time the word good is used is obviously in creation and uh, in Genesis 1 where the Lord said God saw that it was good. And what did he mean? He meant that it, it functioned the way it was supposed to function. It, it functioned in the right way. It produced something. And so whenever he looked at creation, he said, it's good. It's functioning the right way when he created it. And so that's the first time we see it. But I want you to understand, God is good. God is good. Everything about God is good. In Psalm 100, in verse 5, it says, The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. The Lord is good. God is good. Jesus is good. In Acts 10, 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Listen, that's, that's what it is. And, the, and, and in God and in Christianity, goodness should be something that's coming out of the Christian life. But folks, listen, let me tell you something. Every once in a while, you might see goodness coming out of the world. But for the most part, the world doesn't produce the same goodness that we see in Christianity. It produces evil. It produces uh, destruction. All the things that we just read about rioting and wrath and, 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 and variance and hatred and murders and, and reveling and, and riots and all that stuff, that's what the world produces. It should not shock us that the world produces those types of things. It should not be shocking for you to see on the news People beating each other and rioting and doing some of the things that they're doing. That's what the world does. And let me tell you something. The world's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Now, there's people out there that think the world's getting better and better and better, but those people do not have televisions and don't watch the news. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It's always going to be that way. 
And so, let me say this, it's natural, watch this now, it's natural for men to produce evil. But it is supernatural, supernatural, and it should be part of the Christian's life to produce good. The Christian should be producing good. And it's like this, let me ask you a question, if somebody, you bit, a, you bit into an apple, and when you bit into that apple, you found half a worm when you bit into that apple, you got a problem right there. But the first, but my question is this, how did the worm get in the apple? Did it bore a hole and climb into the apple? And then when you bit it, it the apple, no. The worm started off in that apple, grew in, in there, and started working its way out of the apple. It was in that, in that thing as it's developing, maybe an egg was laid in there. It sounds really gross. But, and then it starts to kind of work its way back out of there. That's what takes place with that. And let me tell you something, in the heart of man... It is wicked, and that is what is coming out of them in this world, is that's working its way out of their life into the world. But let me tell you, what should be taking place in the heart of a Christian is it should be goodness in his heart that's working its way out into goodness that's going out into this world. And so let me say this again. It should not surprise you that this world acts in a wicked way. But let me tell you what ought to surprise you. It ought to shock you to death when Christians act that way. It ought to be just absolutely mind-blowing that Christians act in these ways with adultery and fornication and uncleanness and lasciviousness, which just means you're indulging in lustful desires. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. We went through a lot of these envying and murder and drunkenness and reveling. Listen, it ought to shock us that Christians act this way. Christians ought not to act this way. That's what he's saying. He's saying the flesh is going to produce certain things, but you should be walking in the Spirit and being led of the Spirit so that you produce the right things in your life. The world's going to produce this, but Christians should produce that, should produce the spiritual things. And so it ought to shock us. It doesn't shock me when the world acts like this. That's what the world does. But it shocks me and breaks my heart when Christians act like this. And I think it breaks the heart of God when Christians act like this. And there's too much of that in the world today. And let me tell you, I think that the church could be a whole lot more powerful in the world today if people were actually walking in the Spirit. The church could be a bigger light in this world if we were walking in the Spirit. The problem is, in Christianity, and, and listen, I'm not trying to intentionally be really hard with you tonight, but I am just going to preach to you and tell you, look, we could be a whole lot bigger light in Copper's Cove if people didn't just be Christians when they're in church and go back to acting like the world when they left church. We would be a better light. Folks, listen, the light shines really good. We're in here, but, but there's a lot of saved people in here. We need the light to shine in here, but we also need the light to shine out there. We need people to, to look like, act like, be like, speak like, be, not just act like, but be Christians. Producing the fruit of the Spirit in their life. I want you to go through, I'm going to go through a Bible study tonight, and I want to start in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, and we're going to work our way through several places. If you've got a Bible, uh, crack it open. Look, if you've got a phone and that's the way you look at it, keep up. Watch. Watch what it says. Romans chapter 1, I want you to see some things. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 21. I think this, is, this, this space is talking about all men as a, as a whole, what the depravity of man looks like. When man stops being thankful to God, when man starts changing the truth of God into a lie, this is where man's going to end up. So watch what it says in verse 21. Because that when they knew God, let me tell you, there's a lot of people that know God, and especially in this country, there's no way. I, I could see if I was in Thailand and I went to some uh, jungle-type area and I talked to somebody about Jesus and they'd never heard Him. But I'm going to tell you something. In America, people are without excuse. And so we, we know, we knew God. They glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. So watch the problem, the degeneration of man, and it can happen to Christianity, because I'm, I'm going to tell you something, it happened, this exact, this exact degeneration happened in the book of Judges. 
in the book of Joshua and Judges, when they went into the land and God gave them the blessing, they stopped being thankful, they stopped glorifying God, they started doing what they wanted to do, and they ended up, where this ends up, that's where the tribe of Benjamin ended up in, in Judges. It's the exact same degeneration. So before anybody says, well, the world could do this, I'm going to tell you, Christians do this too. All right, they stop being thankful, stop glorifying God, and watch what happens, but became vain in their imaginations. Their minds became empty of what is right, and their foolish heart was darkened. Watch what it says in verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Say it, church. Fools. I'm wise. No, you're not. You're a fool. You stop being thankful for what God's done in your life. You stop glorifying God, and you became a fool in your mind. And when it says in verse 23, they changed, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like to, unto, uh, made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and to creeping things, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. God says, listen, I want you to get this now. Church, listen. Young people, listen. If you say, I'm going to do it my way, I don't need God, I'll do it my way, I'm not thankful, I don't glorify Him, I change His truth into my lie, I'll do it the way I want to do it, God's liable to say, okay, have at it. The end of that road, I promise you, is not good. But you want it, God might say, I'll let you have it. I'll let you go that way. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You know what he said? He said, you want your lust more than you want God, I'll let you have it. And so it says in verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to the vile affections. For even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Recompense is the compensation. Meat means good. So God said, all right, you want to go this way? You can have it. But I'm going to tell you, at the end of the journey of where this is at, homosexuality, it's not what you think it is. When you get to the end of that road, it's not what you think it is. And so, in verse number 39, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness. You say, the world's like that. Yeah, but uh, listen, unfortunately, sometimes the church gets like that too. Maliciousness full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, deceitful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God. Now this is people that know the judgment of God. It started off with a new God and it ending with they know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You see that? You say, now the world, that's the world. I, it is. But I'm going to tell you something. It's sometimes in the church as well. And the church will have, watch, zero power when the church is involved in these things. And so we see Paul starts off at the very beginning. Look at Romans chapter 13. Look at Romans 13. We're just going through the verses. What I did this morning, I woke up, and when I woke up, I woke up twice. I woke up one time with Gabrielle, and I woke up the second time on my own. And the first time I stayed up for a little while with her. But I woke up, I think it was the second time I woke up, and I thought, I want to think through, and I did it this afternoon, every place I could think through where Paul gave a list of sins, a list of sins that he told the church to get rid of. And I wanted to look at that. I, I titled the message, Stop It. There is a, there is a famous, uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a Bob Newhart episode. of, of uh, But I, we, I saw this episode. I thought about putting it up here. And I didn't do it because I thought somebody would get mad sure enough. So I didn't put it up there. But you can go home and watch it. If you just type in the word, Stop It in Google and hit 
like images or video, this video will come up that I'm talking about. And what it is, a little clip of a Bob Newhart episode. And um, I never watched Bob Newhart. My dad did. But, I, but it, I went to a conference one time. They were talking about counseling. And they did this Bob Newhart episode. And in the episode, what it is, is lady comes in and she says, I, uh, it's a long story, but I'll give you the short part. She says, I have a fear of being buried alive in a box. And she says, I have this fear. And he says, has someone threatened to bury you alive in a box? No. Uh, are you, have you been, ever been buried? No. And he said, she says, well, what do I do about it? And he says, I'll tell you what it is. Here it is. Ready? Stop it. She says, if you don't understand, it's really bad. And he says, yeah, I know. I know. Here it is. This is what I'm going to tell you to do. Stop it. And he goes through all this stuff. And really, I've, I've, in my mind, anytime I'm counseling, anytime I'm dealing with people, you know what I always want to say? I just want to end the whole thing by saying, stop it. I was like, preacher, I've got this problem, and it's this, 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 this. And I just want to say, all right, listen, we can save ourselves a whole lot of time. Here's what you do. Stop it. It goes to my mind all the time. And so what I'm looking through, I was looking through these verses, all these verses today, and every time I look through it, there is a phrase somewhere in there that Paul is saying in, in a roundabout way, stop it, Christians, stop it. In Romans chapter number, uh, chapter number 13, look at verse number... 11, Romans 13, he says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time. Folks, listen, Christians, he's writing to the church, he's writing to Christians, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. He's talking about the redemption of our bodies being taken to be with the Lord. And let me tell you something, it is very close. It's getting more and more close all the time, every day. And knowing that it's high time to wake out of sleep, our salvation is nearer than we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You know what he's saying? Stop it. Stop it. Cast off the works of darkness. Stop it. Get that stuff out of your life right now. Stop it. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness. And, and really what rioting is excessful feasting and drinking and sensual indulgences. What drunkenness is intoxication, obviously. Folks, listen, people come in the church and they listen to preaching. They go out and they live somewhere else they, and they act like the world when they get at their home and they're involved in drunkenness and excessiveness and chambering, which is immoral sexual behavior, and wantonness, which is a lack of restraint of sexual behavior, and strife, which is contentions, and envy. And people do that. You say, the world does it. The world does do it. But I'm telling you, the church does it as well. And I'm going to tell you what the church needs to do tonight is this. Say it all together with me. Stop it. Got to stop it. We have got to stop it. Christian, I'm telling you, every one of you, you got to stop it. It's doing nothing but destroying you and destroying your life. And I'm going to tell you something. I I was sitting there looking at Gabriella the night. I took a bunch of pictures of her outside playing in the front porch at Linda's house. And uh, and I was looking through those and and uh, and I thought, man, what a what a blessing, what a gift, what a gift. Some people have children and don't even realize what a gift a child is. But I'm telling you, I know for 20 years we were praying for one. I know what a blessing a child is. I, I thank God every day and say, God, I, I'll tell. I said it today. I kissed her and said, God, thank you for giving me this gift. Now this is what I have to pray also. God, help me, help me every day to be what I need to be for this gift. Because I'm going to invest in her life. And she's going to be whatever we've invested into her life. And listen, if I invest a lot of drunkenness and intoxication and and chambering and wantonness and strife and envy and rioting and all that kind of garbage, that's what she's going to be. You see what I'm going to tell you? Watch, church, listen. Everybody say it with me. Ready? Stop it. You've got to stop it. We've got to stop it right now. This has been a burden in my heart for a year to just say this. You know, I, the other day I, I thought about, I wanted to just get in the pulpit, honestly. I wanted to get in the pulpit. I wanted to come up to the pulpit, and all I wanted to say was, you need to repent. Time to pray. And I was going to walk out the door. 
I thought about it the other day. Because we do, all of us, from the front to the back, every, watch it on, on, on Facebook right now, everybody needs to get their heart right with God. The time is far spent. The day is at hand. It's time to get your heart right with God. It's time to put off all those other things. And in verse 14, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. And watch now, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know what that means? Get all the junk out of the closet. Get all the junk out of the refrigerator. Get all the junk off your TV. Get all the junk off your computer. It's high time to wake up. It's time to get right. It's time for God's people to get right. It's time for God's people to stop it. It's time. Not next week, today. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Because this is what we say. Now, you know me well enough. Everybody in this place and everybody watching, unless you're a visitor, you know me well enough to know that I love you to death. I love you. And I'm going to say these things to you out of love. When the Bible says speak the truth in love, it doesn't mean you can't rebuke. It means you do it because you love people. And I love you because my heart breaks over some of the junk that goes on that's destroying our lives. And I'm telling you, we need to stop. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, look what it says in verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Watch what it says. And such fornication as it is not mu- uh, as Uh, as is not so much as named amongst the Gentiles. Folks, listen now. Listen real close. That's the church. That's the church. And the church... I must be really beating on this thing pretty good. Now listen, now watch. Now that's the church. Watch now. That's the church. And the church has fornication in the church that the lost world wouldn't even talk about. Think about that. Listen, there is things going on in the house of God amongst the people of God that the lost world would not even be doing. That's what he says. He says that one should have his father's wife. Now think about that. Here's a family, and here's somebody in the family that is trying to have a relationship with somebody else in the family, you say, this is crazy. I know, but I'm going to tell you, crazy things happen in churches. Crazy things. And it should not be that way. In verse number 2, it says, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather more. You know what he's saying? Watch now. Two words. Here it is. Stop it. He's saying, listen, you're in the church, and you're saying, ah, we're a good church. The only way you can interpret this that I can think of is here's this thing in the church. Here's somebody doing something they know is absolutely wrong that the lost world wouldn't even be doing, and the rest of the church knows absolutely all about it, and the rest of the church is acting like nothing is even wrong. And you know what he said? Stop it. You you know what you should be doing? Listen, what it says. I, I don't even have to preach these verses. They're just right there. You know what he said we should be doing? We should be mourning. We should be weeping. We should be in the altars crying out to God, God, please do something in the life of my brother or my sister in Christ. Get them on the right track. Help them see what's going on. That's what we ought to be doing. He says, for verily, that's what he says, for verily, as absent in the body but present in the spirit, have judged already. He said, I've already judged it already. As though I were present concerning him that have done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying, you know what he's saying? Your glorying is not good. Know ye that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You know what he's saying? Obviously, putting this together with what Matthew says, leave Matthew 18, obviously this person just would not get right. Because this is a last resort. When when somebody is wrong, you go to your brother, you try to work with him, you try to get him on the right track. But when they refuse and say, I don't care what you have to say, I'm going to do it my way, which is exactly what Romans 1 was. 
then what you have to do at some point is say, okay, I'm telling you, that road's not good, but go, go do it. And what you're basically doing, you're praying for them, you love them, but what you're basically doing is saying, you can go. Prodigal, you can go, but I promise you, when you get to the end of that road, that hog pen that you want to get into is not as good as you think it is. Let me tell you what you ought to be doing. Praying for them. And when they get to that, that end of that road and that hog pen, when they run back, I want to be able to greet them with open arms. I want them in. But I'm going to tell you something. Some people will not get right until they get to the end of the road. You say, well, that's what the lost world does. The church does it too. The church does it too. And it's got to stop. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, just right across the page maybe. Look at verse number 9, watch what it says. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now, idolatry is in there, but I'm going to tell you something. Fornication, adultery, effeminate, abuse of themselves, mankind. That's all. It's amazing to me that in just about every place you see the list of sins written out, they start off with morality. Just about every one of them. You know what that means? That means the church has got to deal with that. That's something that was there in their day, and I promise you, today it's worse, and it's here today too. And so all these things have got to be dealt with. Now, I know what somebody's going to say. They're saying to say, well, I struggle with all those things, so I just give up and I quit. That's not the answer. The answer is fight. Don't just give in to sin. Don't, don't try to hide your sin and play around with sin. Fight your sin. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. Fight the good fight of faith. That's what we're supposed to do. And so he says, no thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. Listen, drunkenness is in here, and covetousness is in here. And again, we see revilers and extortioners are those that are taking from other people and shall inherit the kingdom of God. And watch what it says in verse number 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Listen now, I want you to get this. Such were some of you. You know what he's saying? He's saying, well, I used to be this. I used to be that. I used to be this. I used to do this. I used to do this thing. I used to do that thing. And now, you know what you need to do? Say it with me. Two words. Stop it. Stop it. I used to sleep around. I used to look at this and, and do this when it came to immorality. But now you're saved. Now you're a Christian. Stop it. Stop it. He says in verse number 12, all things are lawful to me, but, but, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body, watch now, is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath, be, hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by His own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Christian, listen to me. He's talking to Christians and he's saying this. Don't you know that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them uh, the, the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. You know what he's saying? Say it. Two words. Say it with me now. Stop it. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You do not belong to you anymore. I used to do this and this and this and look at that and go here and put this in my body and do all this kind of stuff. I know, but you don't belong to you anymore. You've been bought with a price. You know what you got to do now? Stop it. 
Stop it. Verse 20, for you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are whose? Don't belong to you anymore. It belongs to Him. Let's look at the next one. For the 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Just very quickly. I know some of you are thinking, you put a video on the internet today saying, you've got to be here tonight, it's going to be a blessing. And here I showed up, this is a bait and switch. I promise you this will be helpful to you. This will be helpful you, because what you'll do is in the middle of the night, you'll wake up and you'll hear these, those words, those two words. What are they? Stop it. You're going to hear it. And when you start to do the wrong thing, and you start getting into sin, those two words are going to pop in your head. It's going to be, what? Stop it. Look what he says. Paul's writing to this church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and look at verse number 20. He says, for I fear lest when I come, he's, he's going to come to them. He says, when I come, I shall find you such as I, w- such as I, w- I would not find you such as I would, and that I should be found unto you as he would not, lest there be. Now what he's saying, he says, I, I'm, this is what he's saying. When I come, I don't want to come there and find you doing the wrong thing. Because then I'm going to have to be something that I don't want to be, is what he's saying. And so he says this, lest there be debates, accusations and arguments, envyings, rivalry, jealousy, wraths, strifes, same thing, contentions, backbitings, people talking about each other, whisperings, swellings, tumults. What is that? That's just commotion and disorder. Puffed up swellings as being prideful. Unless when I come again, my Lord will humble me among you, meaning I'll have to do something that I don't really want to do, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, watch, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness, which is just indulgences and and lustful desires which they have committed. What Paul's saying? Listen, you say, well, the, the world does this. Yes, but so does the church. But it's got to stop. It's time to stop. It's time to stop all of it. Of course, the next book would be Galatians. We read that already. Look at Ephesians really quick. Ephesians. Look at Ephesians. This is the church now. He's talking to the church. All these churches. He's just written to several churches. The church at Rome. He's just written to the church at Corinth a couple of places. He's written to them a second letter, church at Corinth. He's written to Galatians and told them they shouldn't be acting like this. They should have the fruit of the Spirit. Now he's written to the church that's at Ephesus. And watch what he says to them in verse 17 of chapter 4. Watch what he says. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth from this time forth. You know what he's saying? Stop it. From this time forth. Walk not as other Gentiles walk. Stop walking like the rest of this world walks. Stop doing like the rest of this world does. Stop talking like the rest of this world talks. Stop acting like the rest of this world acts. He says, henceforth, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. It's amazing these things are always found here that's indulgences in sexual lusts. To work all cleanness, uncleanness, and greedy, but ye have not so learned Christ. Listen, you're a Christian. Are you a Christian? If you're a Christian, you know what he's saying? Stop acting like the world. Stop doing what the world is doing. Watch. We... Facebook is filled with all the garbage going on in this world. And be honest with you folks, I wish some of you would just stop spreading all the hatred and all the violence and all the commotion. What I wish people would do instead is maybe share the gospel. That's the only thing that's going to change a life is the gospel of Jesus Christ. One more post about how bad the world is does nothing but just stir up everybody else. Instead, why don't you post something about the gospel? Instead, why don't you post something about the fact that, yes, that's what the world does, but Christians should be a light in this world. Post that instead. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, don't ever take a break from preaching 
three days worth is all coming out in one shot. I know. But Ephesians chapter 4, he says, henceforth, don't walk like this. Don't be like them. Don't think like them. And their mind, their understanding, their ignorance, their blinded hearts, don't think like them. You've not learned Christ. Folks, listen, if you're a Bible believer, if you've got the Bible, you have not learned to act like that and be a Christian. The Bible does not tell you to act loose and indulge in all that kind of behavior and call yourself a Christian. It does not give you the license to do that. You haven't learned that from Christ. You may have learned that from a YouTube channel, but you've never learned. Christ has never said, well, listen, just go out there and fulfill the lust of your flesh. In fact, in Galatians, I preached on it the other day, that he says, you do have liberty, but you can't use that liberty to satisfy the lust of your flesh. And so Ephesians, he goes through it. In verse 22, he tells you to put off, be renewed in your mind, get the right thinking. Verse 23, put on the new man. Put away lying. The world lies. Christians shouldn't lie. Put away your, your sinful anger and, 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 and act right, is basically what he's saying. The world is angry in sin. The world gets mad and throws, throws a brick through a window. This world gets mad and burns something down. This world gets mad and posts a post with a bunch of cuss words in it. But Christians don't act like that. Christians don't act like that. Put away lying. Put away the anger. Don't steal anymore. Verse 28. You used to steal, now you work with your hands to give to somebody. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Listen, all the cussing that comes out, all the cussing that we pose, you want to try to do? Watch, say it. Two words, it's this. Stop it. Stop it. Verse 30, you know what you're doing? You're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away with you all malice. And listen, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That's the way Christianity should be. Ephesians 5, he goes on again. We'll look at Ephesians 5. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Listen, that's how we ought to walk, sacrificing ourselves for others. In verse 3, but fornication, and here it is again. Fornication and uncleanness and covetousness. Let it not, watch what it says now, let it not be once, not not sometimes, not every once in a while, but not even once named among you. Let it not even once be named among you as become a saint. You know what he's saying? Listen, it's so easy. Two words. Stop it. Don't even let it be named once among you. Stop it, stop it, stop it, Christians. Watch what he says in verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, don't be partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. Listen, Christian, you are now the light of the Lord. Walk as a children, a child of light. Don't be playing around with darkness. For the fruit of the Spirit, and there it is again, fruit of the Spirit is goodness, is, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You know what, Christian, you know what you do? You prove what is acceptable to the Lord. When you act like this world, you prove that there is no power in Christianity. At least not in your life. In verse number 11, it says, And have no fellowship. Say that with me, those two words. Having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For Watch now, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know what, in Romans 1, what you read at the end of it, it says people that know the judgment of God not only do those things, but they have pleasure in people that do them. You know what we do? We take pleasure in watching on TV, watching people do things that we know is absolutely abominable to God. And we entertain it. And that's our entertainment. Take one more deep breath. I heard people taking deep breaths over there. That's good. First, Timoth First Thessalonians chapter 4. Very quickly. Very quickly. I'm out of time already. 
First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse number 3, this is the will of God. I mean, how many people like to know what the will of God is for your life? How many of you want to know? I want to know the will of God. Young people, do you ever want to know what the will of God is for your life? Good. Anybody want to know what the will of God is for your life? Any of them? Few people want to know what the will of God is for their life. Let me tell you what it is. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. You want to know the will of God for your life? Keep your hands and your body under control. Keep your eyes off of pornography. You want the will of God for your life? Watch it now. Watch. Stop it. Stop it right now. This ought to be everybody's wake-up call. Stop it. So he says, in verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence. That's the hardest word in the Bible to say. But that's, again, that's the same thing we've been talking about. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. Then he's saying, stop it. The Gentiles act like this. The lost world acts like this. But you know what? They don't know God. You know God. Listen, listen, everybody look at me. You're a child of God. Are you a child of God? Say amen. amen. You're a child of God. You know God. You're learning God. You've got the Bible. You've got the very words of God in your hands. You've got the very words of God on your dashboard in your car. You've got the very words of God sitting on your coffee table in your house. The very words of God are on your phones. You've got the very words of God that created everything that we see, touch, feel, and know. And you've got that God in you. You know God. We have no business acting like the way this world acts. No business acting like it. And let me say, I, I'll just give you some of these other ones. I'm going I'm to read you one more because it's just so necessary. I'm telling you, this is my heart tonight. And I, I, I know if somebody's listening and doesn't know me, they think that guy just hates people and he's, he's mad. I am not mad, I promise you. My heart is broken. That's what it really is. It is broken. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Again, you have to turn there, but I'm just going to tell you. This is what it says. This know that in the last days perilous times will come. Men should be lovers of their own selves. I don't need God. I, I love me. Covetous. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. They're doing things that are unnatural when it comes to their affections. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, which means they cannot control themselves. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady. Listen, despisers of those that are good. They are upset with people that do want to do good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, Watch now, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I want what I want more than I want what God wants. Verse 5, watch this now. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. You know what he's saying? Stop it. Stop it. I'm telling you, there are a lot of Christians. There are a lot of Christians. There may be Christians in here. God forbid. But there's a lot of Christians that they have a form of Christianity. Listen, listen, I can put this suit on. This is a bigger suit. I can button this one. Get the little tie. You get the little thing in the tie, and you've got your King James Bible under your arm, and and you know where to say amen. You You know all the songs that are being sung. And listen, you've got a form of godliness, but no power. No power. Listen, Christian, every Christian listening, they are here, wherever you're at, or in the future. Listen, it's time that we start being powerful Christians. Walking in the Spirit. I know, listen, I know that the stuff I've been preaching on, 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 uh, on all the different fruit, all the different stuff we've been saying, all the things we've been doing for months now, I know to some of you it seems like, oh, this is so trivial, it's so elementary. If it was so elementary, people would be doing it. The problem is people are not walking in the Spirit. 
People are not spending time reading their Bible. People are not spending time reading. People are not spending time yielding themselves to the Spirit of God. People are not spending time in prayer. People are not spending time asking God, what is your will for my life? People are spending time instead, pleasure for themselves. And because of that, we have a fake Christianity. A Christianity where it's okay to come in here and raise your hand and say amen, and it's okay to go out there and commit adultery. It's okay to go out there and commit fornication. It's okay to go out there and lasciviousness, which means indulging in lustfulness. It's okay to go out there and riot. It's okay to go out there and watch young people be disobedient to your parents. It's okay to go out there and do all those things. It's okay to go out there and get drunk and be a drunkard and then come in here and say, glory to God, praise God, God's good. Folks, it's time for us to do what? Two words. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Listen, I I love your children. I love your children so much that I'll pray for you to get right so your children got a shot at getting right. I hope nobody's listening to this message because what they're going to think is we've got a terrible church and we don't. We have a fantastic church. And what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is, this is what I want you to get a hold of. Every church in the Bible had the same problem. And every church in the Bible, in chapter 4, he just finished that in chapter 3. In chapter 4, you know what Paul said? Preach the word. Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reproved rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You know why? Because the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own, watch, lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their, their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know what? People would rather hear a lie. They'd rather hear a clever story. They would le- rather hear a joke. They'd rather hear anything else other than somebody getting in the pulpit and preaching the Word of God. And that's the time we live in. Because when someone preaches the Word of God, listen, Paul loved every one of those churches like I love this church. That Paul wrote to every one of those churches and said, you need to stop and get on the right track. You need to repent. And then he told a younger preacher, this world is getting worse and worse and worse, and the church is right along with them, and you've got to do the exact same thing. Preach the word. Tell them. And in Titus chapter 2, read the whole chapter. You know what he's saying? You know what we're supposed to be doing? The, the grace of God that has been given to us as saved people, he says, is teaching us teaching us that denying ungodliness and lust, things like that, we should live, we live living soberly and righteously in this present world. You know what we should be doing, folks? This world is a mess. How many can say amen to that? This world's a mess. It's a mess. The news, it's a mess. Listen, we, we were all, alarms are going off of those phones last week about a two-year-old that they could not find. And the two-year-old they found this week in a dumpster, dead somewhere. This world's a mess. An absolute mess. The very first case I ever worked in the CID was a, a four-year-old that a man punched so hard that he killed the four-year-old. This world's a mess. You know what this world needs? This world has no hope. No hope. The president is not going to give any hope to this world. A new president's not going to give any hope to this world. The Senate, the Con- nobody's bringing any hope to this world. The only thing that'll change this world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only thing that'll change this world is a group of Christians that can actually be the light of God in this dark world. That's it. That's all that's changing it. Somebody called me last week and said, Preacher, we have a radio station in town. We want you to be part of a big movement. We've got to take a stand. And I, listen, I am not for uh, any of this uh, race stuff. I'm not for it at all whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. I think all of it is a bunch of absolute garbage and nonsense. I'm not for any of that stuff. But I told him, I said, what does it look like for us to take a stand? What do you want for me to take a stand? I'll be glad to take a stand with you. What do you want it to look like? Well, we want reform. We want people to start treating each other better. We want black people to start treating white people right, and white people to start treating black people right. And I said, you've been trying to do that for years. You can't change the world. You can't reform the world. But you can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. 
and goodness can start coming out of you. Folks, listen. Christian that's sitting in here, you ought to have goodness coming out of your heart. The second half of this, I promise you, would be a lot sweeter. Goodness should be what we are, not just what we do. People should be able to say, those people are good. Those people up on the hills are good. Some of y'all gave extra this, this past couple of months. People in the church gave extra. And there was people in the church that called me that were hurting, needing something. And we helped them because you gave extra. You know what they told me? They said, I've never been in a church. I've never even had a family member that loved me and helped me the way this church has helped me. This church loves people. This is a good church. This is a fantastic church. You are, you are good people. But I'm telling you, you have got to stop some of the nonsense. If you're in here or you're listening and you know the, the I didn't speak to you, the Word of God, I preached what the Word of God says tonight. I just gave it to you, the verses. And you know if it hits you and you need to stop some things, I promise you tonight was a wake-up call. You have got to stop it before it's too late. Now is the time to stop it. We have got to get the power back. We have got to get the power back in our homes. We've got to get the power back in our churches. We've got to be a lighthouse in this community. Nobody else is doing it. We've got to do it. And we can't do it if we're a form of godliness but no power. We've got to do it. Let's stand. Lord, please help us tonight. Please. Lord, I have, I've tried to just pour my heart out. I really have, Lord. We all need this. We, everybody listening needs this tonight. I'm, I'm sure some turned it off. Father, you know my heart. You know my heart. Lord, I love these people. I, I pain for these people. I want them to have everything that you've got for them, and, I'm, and you want more, more than I want it. Lord, some of them have no power against the devil. The devil just takes them, in 2 Timothy 2, just takes them at his will because they're playing around with the wrong things. And Lord, I pray that you please help us tonight put an end to all that, to stop making provision for our flesh to get involved with the things that are killing us. Lord, tonight, help, help your people tonight to set some things in order. Help all of us tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We ask you to bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. She's going to play. Why don't you all just pray right where you're at so nobody has to think, well, they're praying. They got something wrong. Everybody just pray tonight. Everybody just pray. Talk to the Lord about whatever's going on in your heart.